Okay, Oscar fans, we have about a week to go before the big night, and we still have a puzzle over that pesky best picture race. But lucky for us, we have Pete Hammond from Deadline Hollywood. I'm Tom O'Neill from Gold Derby. And Pete, one week ago, yeah. uh, 12 of the experts at Gold Derby, the most, said Spotlight was going to win best picture. We had six for Big Short. We had five for Revenant. Now, mm. since BAFTA, yeah. there's been this stampede over to Revenant. Fifteen of them uh, are picking Revenant now. Five Spotlight, five The Big Short. Come on, what's going on here? BAFTA was wrong last year. Yeah, and they're very fickle, these people, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I'm one of them. I switched to <laughs> Revenant. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I don't know. I say hold your guns here. You know, uh, BAFTA's fine. DGA's fine. Um, you know, uh, some of these awards, the Golden Globes are fine. Look, the Revenant won all of those. Oh, let me talk about the preferential ballot. That's how the Oscars vote, okay? As do the Critics' Choice, as does the PGA. Now, the Revenant uh, did not win PGA. That went to the big short. Uh, the Revenant did not win Critics' Choice. That went to Spotlight. These are the two social issue movies we've been talking about, sort of battling each other. The Oscars are voting right now on a preferential ballot for Best Picture. I want to see how that turns out. I think it's fine that The Revenant won uh, at the DGA and at BAFTA and at the Globes. But remember last year, uh, Birdman actually uh, lost uh, at the Globes and at BAFTA. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, the DGA is a little twist here. That gives it a little more. But I think this could be a year where they look at director and say, oh, my God, Inuritu, I don't care if he won last year. What a job. He survived. He did this. So that DGA award makes some sense, but it might not... Uh, pay off in a Best Picture win right. uh, for The Revenant. That's the big question right here. Now, everything says to me The Revenant's the safe choice. You know, the number of nominations it has, everything down the line, the, the kind of numbers that it can rack up as a Best Picture winner, it seems like the one that can do that. Maybe Mad Max could too, but I don't think that's in it as much as The Revenant is right now. And it's going to get a lot of number one votes. But in my uh, travels, with talking to many Academy members and people in the business, um, they either love it or they admire it. So it's either a number one vote or it's a four or five, or maybe even further down, some have told me. Um, I don't know it's as many number two votes or three votes. And as you know, that's what's important here well, on a preferential ballot. That's how I think Birdman won last year. I think that's yeah. where a BAFTA, they have just a system of five nominees <laughs> and check off one for winner. Boyhood wins there. It's the most emotional movie. Yeah. I get that. And, uh, and I'm worried now about the preferential ballot here, too. But Yeah, I think I, it's the number twos, you know. I mean, yes, uh, yeah, that, that I think really, that really could be here. more important. But I also have found... Uh, lately that these Academy members who've been voting this way for a few, few years right. now do not have a clue what it means. And it's very interesting to talk to them um, because even now they don't know, they don't understand the whole thing. That their you number know. two counts for yeah, something. That yeah, it yeah, counts yeah. or they can just uh, arbitrarily right, list right, the right. stuff on this thing. So right. it, it's, it's going to be a very interesting race. I have uh, said all along, I have a hunch that it might be more PGA than DGA this year and that the big short could uh, sneak in or Spotlight could sneak in. I have a problem with Spotlight in that I only see it winning original screenplay. Right. If it wins Best Picture, it would just be those two first time. But doesn't time. Big Short have the same problem? It's not going to win that editing I, award, I think Pete. No, editing, Not I after do. BAFTA. We learned something. <laughs> and let's explain what BAFTA is. Yes. It's the British Academy right. Awards. They share about 500 voters with the Oscars. And you might say, well, that's just 500. Yeah. Statistically, that's about 8% of the Academy. Yeah. Look, if we can predict the presidential election in the United right. States with 300 million people yeah. based on 1,500 people, right. the statistical sample that BAFTA represents for the Oscars is Huge. Maybe if they all voted, first of all, if those 500 in BAFTA all voted, how many? How, right, how, right, right. Do you know, Tom, how many yes, voted? Yes, I happen to talk to all, <laughs> all of them last week. I mean, if you know how many voted, I'll buy into this Look, statistical I, I, crap. I admit, I have, I have uh, jump ship for the Revenant. I dumped yeah. Big Short last week because right. there's just too many things pointing the Revenant's way. I absolutely agree with you that it's not everybody's number two vote, but I think it's a lot of people's number two votes because. Maybe because it's, you're checking off Leo, you're checking as a voter, you're checking off uh, director. We know that Inuritu is going to win there. I totally think Inuritu is going to win director. I, right. I trust the DGA. Cinematography is going to win. Obviously, Leo is going to win best actor. Right. I trust that. 
Uh, cinematography, yes. definitely. It got ASC. So do I you think see it's a, winning, though. Do those. you see a little, a little sweep forming here, Pete? You no. Know, you know what? I think you can make an argument for each one of those. Let's talk about how the guilds have voted this year. The ASC, the cinematographers, they went with um, Chivo, uh, third year in a sure. row for the cinematography. The guy's, it's his fifth. ASC award. Right, right, right. I mean, nobody else need apply. Sure. This guy just wins every year. Uh, and then you have the directors. Well, yeah, they went uh, there, and that makes perfect sense. Um, the, uh, the Screen the Actors Guild went with Spotlight, right, right, right. and uh, the, the editors uh, went with Mad Max yes, and Big Short. Yes, and the PGA went with Big Short. Right. And therein this is, is the split problem this all year. over the place. Right, because last year we had Birdman, Birdman, Birdman. We experts were saying boyhood, a lot of us, up till the point when the guilds uh, made us smart. But then suddenly we flipped over to Birdman but, when we said, but let me finish this point. This year, if BAFTA's right, the, we have proof out there that the Gold Derby pundits are idiots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tom, we've already <laughs> had proof of that. You're the leader of the pack. The Confederacy of Dunces, also known as Gold Derby. <laughs> and we deserve that because we've had Spotlight out front all along. Except yes. one month ago, there was a tie between Revenant and Spotlight. Now, in Gold Derby's defense, I can say that, look, we had Leo and Brie Larson out front since September, so yeah. we got that right. But mm -hmm. this year, if we're wrong, if Revenant, well, I mean, if we're right now and Revenant goes through, we didn't spot it as the winner until two weeks before the ceremony, and that's really, really late because we yeah. nailed Birdman. The years when we were wrong, right. we, nailed, uh, we got Birdman rather late, but earlier than now, Many other years, of course, we knew from September on that it would be the artist or 12 mm -hmm. versus slave. Are you done? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get back to my point. The guilds <laughs> have all voted <laughs> down, down the line here. So I'm getting to it. Okay. The Big Short won the Producers Guild. Mm -hmm. That's the Best Picture Award Oscar style here. After one uh, six out of seven years care. for the Oscar. I don't care. <laughs> I'm talking about the guilds, okay. and the guilds have gone down the line. So we have Producers Guild, which represents Best Picture, because the producers are the one that win the Best Picture Oscar. Uh, they are going with the big short. And they've directors, always been right for the last yeah. six years of the preference And uh, eight. eight. And the directors... The um, preferential ballots only six oh, years Oh, yeah, well, old. that's true. And eight, you know, uh, and, then, um, and then we have the Directors Guild. They are going with uh, Inuritu. I totally well, we buy that. into that. The Writers Guild is going in with the two movies I know are going to win there, Spotlight and The Big Short. Right. Absolutely. And SAG went with the actor's favorite, which is Spotlight. And that's the only thing that I don't think is going to match. I don't think the actors from Spotlight will win at the, um, at the Oscars. But um, this race is very easy to call in the sense that just follow the guild's lead here, each one of them, in a split year. That's what's happening here. And in the tech races, it's following that, too, with a lot of love for Mad Max. So uh, let's see how this plays out. I think it's a very interesting year. A lot year. of possibilities. Now let's bring up my favorite subject, what's Room. That? Now, oh, Room, that's not going to upset. The New York You've had Times. this kooky theory <laughs> from the beginning, and it's not going to happen. No less than the New York Ooh, Times The New York today. Times, yes. Who, by the way, who predicted, really screwed it up, by the way. By the way <laughs> also once predicted that the mechanical car would never replace horses. But that yes, was a few well, there you ago. go. But I must say that the New York Times, in their, in their reasoning, after I said this first, and now everyone's jumping on the bandwagon, could room win? Could you have a split thing here where all these things come in and everybody's watching room right now? One Academy member One, called four. me up and said, do you know how I can get a screener of Room? I didn't get my DVD screener, and I immediately made sure that he found a way to get that. But it was very interesting. He hadn't seen the movie either, and I think a lot of them haven't. It's very emotional. It's something that people are watching now. It's got, as I've said many times before, the directing nomination, and I've compared it to Chariots of Fire. The New York Times thinks it's Million Dollar Baby all over again. I don't know where they get that. Million Dollar Baby was a slam dunk by the time we got to the Oscars. Right. It had one DGA, mm -hmm. you know, it came out a little late, but that is not the example to use here. And no, it's no, smart no. to see on Twitter Mark Harris and some smart people going like, what are they smoking over the New York Times and writing in this way? But I do applaud them uh, for following my lead and talking about the possibility <laughs> right off a cliff. of room. <laughs> anyway, I like to throw that stuff. Isn't it time for a huge, giant surprise? Isn't that what we want? Right now, it is so predictable. Although This is one thing the New York Times did get right. 
there are no surprises anymore at the I Oscars. Know, know. And I don't know why that is. Is it because of us, Tom? It is in a large way the echo chamber of the experts and the blogosphere that's built around it. It's also this this explosion of precursor awards. We didn't used to have the Critics' Choice. No. We didn't used to have, you know, BAFTA was after the Oscars, not right. before the Oscars. And so, uh, and they and plus the Oscars moved up a month. And so we've kind of crunched all of these. Yeah, and it has, it has an impact. I think it has, because when uh, Chariots of Fire shocked everybody mm -hmm. and won, you know, you didn't have any of this uh, warning that right. we had here. You know, that year was Reds versus On Golden Pond versus Raiders of the Lost Ark. And this little British movie, most people weren't paying attention to. And it didn't win director like the same situation this year where, where I don't think, um, you know, the best picture winner is necessarily going to be the best director winner. I think that's the one that is the best comparison here, if there is room for room at the end. Apparently, <laughs> you don't think so. No, Tom O'Neill has spoken. <laughs> Let's talk about okay. uh, the uh, no surprises thing, because I think there is a potential for a surprise from Kate Winslet over Alicia Vikander. Well, she won at BAFTA. She won the Golden Globe. Yeah, now, well. granted, Alicia Vikander was not competing yeah, she for, was. For, the, for the Danish girl at right. BAFTA. No. Uh, she was competing, of course, for Ex Machina, and she was in another category over there. So maybe be, because uh, the, 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 the space was cleared for, for Kate to go in there. But I still think there is a chance, and I'm tempted, um, Alicia's my pick now, but I'm yeah. tempted, if we're looking for that long shot and, and wanting to go out on a limb, that would be mine. Should I do it? Yeah, you did it at SAG, and where did that I get know, you? I know, I know. that was. Funny. And I followed you on that uh, one, buddy. I heard well, that whole story. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. here's the thing. Kate Winslet told me, I taught her it's lovely, and she said, oh, my category people are popping in and out this year. I can't keep up with it. I don't know who's what, you know? And I said, well, every time you compete with Alicia Vikander, you win because it's for Ex Machina with her, right, you right, know, right. at the Golden Globes and now at BAFTA. Uh, and then when you competed with the Danish girl, you lose because that's a leading role, much like you had in The Reader, where they were trying to slam her into supporting that year that they pushed her back into the lead actress, which was right. The Academy, on the other hand, has bought into this supporting campaign for Alicia, and she's got the fact that a lot of them are seeing Ex Machina and really liking it, too. So she's got that. I think it's Alicia Vikander's to lose at this point, but I do think of the four acting uh, categories, that's the one where there could, could be, be a surprise. And, th and that's why I want to catch it if there is a surprise, because I want to be vindicated for my bad SAG prediction. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's a whole other yes. discussion okay. here. Um, let's talk about one other very interesting uh, win by, by The Revenant at BAFTA, which was in that sound category. Yes. And we knew that, yeah. and we knew that it was a player there, but, it right. went, but we were all thinking, you know, um, um, Mad Max or something there. Is Star there's... Wars, you know, some big movie. Yeah, Sound is always goes to big the, movies. The, big, the loudest movie, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. But but I'm wondering, is, is this uh, a possibility? Does this tell us that The Revenant is stronger than... Well, I, I don't know when we get to the Sound Awards, where in the show it will be, if that's going to tell us anything. But if The Revenant does pull off one of those Sound Awards... Uh, then that's a very good sign for it, because that's a category I wasn't expecting it necessarily right, to beat right, Mad right. Max Same in, here. or Star Wars, or well, We uh, knew it was those. a player, but we didn't Yeah, think. here's what's going to happen on Oscar night. You're going to get to that best film editing category. Once again, it's very key. What wins there? Look, if Mad Max wins, that's against Revenant, which is nominated. That's not only good for, you know, for uh, Mad big, Max, because it won there. Short it's and really like, good absolutely. for The Revenant. Because even though it loses in film editing, Mad Max isn't going to win Best Picture. I don't think it is. But there's often a, t uh, a tie between, uh, a, a mysterious connection between <laughs> film editing yeah. and picture. So why would that be good well, for Well, I think it would be good because if, for some reason, Spotlight, or more likely The Big Short, right. could win editing, that's your Best Picture winner. If that, if, if that happens if early that happens, on, absolutely. That, that, would, that will be that. the telltale that sign the right tale, there. Tale, tale, but if it was it's the Mad Max as it was at BAFTA, that's only going to tell you that it's probably the revenant, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, does um, BAFTA in general, do you believe, predict the Oscars for the acting races? Last year it <laughs> did. Two years ago you could say, well, uh, Dallas Buyers Club opened too late in Britain. It didn't get nominated, so therefore McConaughey and um, Jared yeah. Leto wasn't um, on the list, so therefore right. they lost. Uh, the two exceptions in recent years where it didn't carry over was they went with Jennifer Lawrence over Lupita, right. but they actually owed Jennifer one because the previous year yeah. they went with Emmanuel Riva over Jennifer. But and remember the year they went with Colin Firth and um, uh, uh, you know uh, what's her name, uh, Carrie Mulligan, right, 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 uh, from right, right. Education. Two Brits. They okay. went. So 
sometimes go in the hometown area, then right. they weren't going to win uh, the Oscars that year. It's, it's interesting, but I do think generally BAFTA's trying yeah. to be and, just and, like the Oscars. And so. they told us about the Christoph Waltz upset for Django, that yeah. that was coming, right. even though most uh, pundits were out there for what Tommy Lee Jones yeah, or Yeah, right, it was. exactly. Um, no, I think that's uh, probably true. I think they've got it right, basically, uh, except in uh, the supporting categories this year. Uh, for you know Stallone, that just wasn't out there in time uh, in Britain, and with the screeners, as it wasn't for SAG either. Um, and uh, in the case of supporting actress, where they um, had the situation with Alicia Vikander in lead for Danish Girl, so uh, uh, you know it's just the but nature. In general, of it. it's a, it's a pretty good barometer. In general, it is, but they got they'll get two two this year. Okay, so never mind our predictions. Let's help them. The little. People, the little people out there in the dark. In there. Oh. <laughs> Those people. Okay. Uh, fill out their ballot. So, you know, yeah. uh, I, I, like, I like to say if I were merely re wagering my rep reputation as a pundit, I would go this way. But if I yeah. was wagering money, I would do that. Right. So um, what's your general take to people filling out their ballot now? If they want to play yeah. safe, go with Revenant. But if they want to... I think play it safe. I'm going to say it again. I'll say it again. Play it safe. I generally don't play it safe to... to uh, I should. I should. But, but that's... Been to your great credit because you've called yeah. these long shots like Tilda Swinton. You called yeah. Jim Broadbent. Right. You called them and these Marissa are Marissa uh, Tomei. I Marissa called Marissa Tomei. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have that on your um, Marsha Gay Harden. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, I'm pretty good with some of the actor ones. I can pick up that um, antenna up here. Uh, you know, it does look like uh, the Revenant may be the uh, the one the beneficiary. I wrote the other day. I said again, it reminds me of 1951 Oscars when you had Streetcar Named Desire and um, Place, in the Sun. Place in the Sun punching each other out like Spotlight and um, and Big Short are doing this right. time. Every time you hear people talking about both those movies together, well, what snuck in and one best picture in between those? It was an American in Paris. And even to the point where MGM, which released that film, uh, was shocked. And they took out an ad the next day with Leo the Lion, a caricature, no saying, honestly, I was just waiting in the sun for a streetcar. Did not expect to win. But that was where you had a pure, straight down vote. You didn't have this preferential stuff, trying to get a consensus movie and all of that. Uh, if that was the case this year, I would say definitely Revenant would win. But again, with the preferential ballot, it still adds an air of mystery, even though we have to pretty much say Revenant at this point is probably a front runner. Okay, I agree with that, and I'm worried about uh, Big Short, and actually a little bit about Spotlight, too. Pete, let's pick this up one last time next week, and let's go okay. through our Oscar ballot and say, all right, this is going to win and why. Let's help yes. everybody in all 24 categories. Uh, we'll do that. Okay.